Player 1 and Player 2 play a game using Spinner A and Spinner B as shown. Player 1 gets to choose one of the spinners. Both players spin, and the one getting the larger number wins. I think the crucial thing to notice here is that Player 1 gets to choose the spinner to use. That's a big advantage if the player can make a, a smart selection which comes to the question that they're asking, which spinner should player one choose? Obviously spinner A doesn't win all the time. Spinner B does not win all the time. There has to be some way of deciding which is the best. My suggestion is to list out every possible way the spinners could land, any combination, and then count how many times each spinner wins. And that should give you the information you need to make the right decision. So for instance, I might make a little chart where I've got a row for the spin that spinner A goes through, a row for spinner B, and then I have a row for who wins that match. And then I list every possible combination. So for instance, what if I said spinner A came out one and spinner B came out two? That's one possibility. The larger number wins, so that tells me immediately that B wins. Then I keep going. I've matched spinner A's one with spinner B's two. What about matching spinner A's one with spinner B's seven? Well, again, seven is larger than one, so spinner B wins again. If I'm going to stay with the one on spinner A, the only other choice I have is to match it with the eight on spinner B. Again, 8 is larger than 1, so spinner B wins yet again. Spinner B is looking pretty good, but keep in mind I chose the lowest number on spinner A to start with. So I, now I'll move forward. What if I let spinner A end up with a 4 and match it across? So maybe spinner A gets matched up with a 2 on spinner B. Well, 4 is larger than 2. So this time, spinner A wins. Keeping up matching 4, if I match 4 with the 7 from spinner B, 7 is bigger than 4, so B wins. And lastly, match 4 up with the only other one that I haven't matched it with, and that is 8. Well, 8 is bigger than 4, so B wins again. What haven't I done? Well, I haven't matched a 9 on spinner A with anything, so I'll match the 9 with the 2. Now, 9 is bigger than 2, so spinner A wins. Then I could match the 9 with the 7. 9 is bigger than 7, so A wins again. And finally, I could match 9 with 8, and 9 is bigger than 8, so spinner A wins. So the question is as it was before, which spinner should player one choose? Well obviously he or she should choose the spinner that wins most often. And if you look, it should be B because spinner B wins one, two, three, four, five out of the nine times. So the probability of winning if the player chooses spinner B is simply five ninths, five out of nine times. So if player one is smart, he or she will choose spinner B and expect to win five ninths of the time.